everyone, Hungry Reader here. The question is the same today as it was a hundred years ago. What do you do for an encore? L. Frank Baum and W. W. Denslow had just turned the world of children's literature on its head with their phenomenally successful The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Now, how do you follow that up? Well, if you ask them, not the way they did. It makes you get your freak on! Mr. Baum and Mr. Denslow followed up The Wonderful Wizard of Oz with Dot and Tot of Maryland. You'd be pretty hard-pressed to find someone who likes Dot and Tot better than they like The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Many reviews that I looked up for it regarded it as sort of condescending, especially compared to the meaningful nonsense of The Wizard of Oz. And once again, one of the reasons that we remember The Wizard of Oz but not this book is because of certain things that we don't talk about in polite company anymore that were all over this book. So Dot and Todd are two friends who are staying at a farm together. One day while on a picnic, they go for a ride in a seemingly abandoned boat that takes them into a tunnel in a mysterious cave. There they enter the many valleys of Maryland. One of the big problems with this book is that Dot and Tot are just observers. They don't actually have that much of an adventure. They just see strange things. The first valley is a valley of clowns. <sighs> big deal. The next valley is a valley made all out of candy. Even the people are made of candy. And when one of them dies, they eat him. How charming! We're told that the people of the Candy Valley, being made out of nothing but candy and eating nothing but candy, are all fat and have all lost their teeth. What a great place to live! Also, the candy people are... well, I'll let the candy man say it. One of our greatest troubles is that we cannot depend on our colored servants who are chocolate. Chocolates can seldom be depended on, you know. Chocolate lives matter. After they leave the horrible racist candy people, they come to the Valley of Storks. This is where flowers drift down from the sky, and storks retrieve babies from them and fly them to people all over the world. Once again, big deal. Finally, they come to the land of dolls. This is where the queen of all Maryland lives, a wax doll. This is something that I was completely unaware of until I started reading old L. Frank Baum books. The idea of making dolls out of wax, that just seems so... so temporary. You know, not... Would? Since the queen has no idea how to send them home, she instead adopts them and makes them both into royalty. Of course, the obvious answer is just for them to get back on the boat and keep rowing. Now we come to the Valley of... Once again... Again and again, I gotta say it. Language was so different. The Valley of Pussycats. Or, as they seem to always refer to them, the pussies. He lifted his voice and uttered a loud wailing cry. Scarcely had it died away when the pussies began to appear. Dot had no idea there were so many kinds and colors of pussies in the world. Tot wasn't a bit frightened when a gentle-looking pussy of uncertain age came up to him. I like to pretend a six-year-old could watch my show, but... <laughs> it's cats! It's kitty cats! It's just cats! I'll tell you one thing, though, I would love to visit a valley of friendly talking cats. <laughs> Next, they come to a valley made up of toy animals, who all need to be wound up or squeaked or whatever. And this is also home to the coolest character of the whole book, Mr. Split. Hopping toward them with wonderful speed was the queerest man the children had seen in all this queer kingdom. He was not in fact a complete man, but just half of a man, as if he'd been cut in two from the middle of his head straight downward. In your match, ha, say! He meant to say, good evening, your majesty, I'm happy to see you. But there being only half of him, he only spoke half of each word. Mr. Split's job is to run around the whole valley and take care of all the animals that need winding, which means that he has to be able to be in two places at once. Now, I know there have been times when I absolutely coveted Mr. Split's ability, and I'm sure you have too. <laughs> Finally, they find their way to the Valley of Lost Things, where all the things that gets lost between couch cushions and so forth gets collected. And Dot finds a beloved doll that she had lost many years ago and gets to keep. Then they get in the boat and sail on through and find themselves back at the farmhouse where they started. The end. There's a lot of imagination in this book, but 
in some ways, it sort of feels like it's being spoon fed to you because there is no real threat in the whole story. Dot and Tot make a couple of messes as they wander around, but there's never any sort of, you know, you'll never get home. And also, all the stuff that they focus on in the book is all seems very pedestrian and very kid oriented like oh here's a land of dollies here's a land of candy here's a land of kitties here's a land of babies eh. well at least there wasn't a land of guns <laughs>